Your attention, masters, mistresses. All systems functional for the Everything Geek podcast. Hey, this is Rich McDonald, and I play Commander David Mason on Call of Duty Black Ops 2. And you're listening to Everything Geek Podcast. It's James Arnold Taylor, the voice of Obi-Wan Kenobi and Master Pro Cool in Star Wars The Clone Wars, and you're listening to Everything Geek, the podcast. Hey, it's Leif Gamfert. I played Uncle Ben's killer in The Amazing Spider-Man, and you're listening to... The Everything Geek Podcast. Hello, I'm Simon Fisherbecker. You probably know me better as Dorian Moldovar from Doctor Who, or the Fat Friar from Harry Potter. And this is Everything Geek Podcast. Face it, Tiger. You just hit the jackpot with the Everything Geek Podcast. You're listening to the Everything Geek Podcast, bringing you interviews from your favorite films and TV shows every week, and all of the latest news. Here's your host, Rory Williamson. Hello everyone, you're listening to the Everything Geek Podcast. I'm your host, Rory, and joining me today is a very special guest. We have actor Kobe Bell, who stars as Jace Turner in The Gifted, and his other notable roles include Jason Pitts in The Game, Tyrone Davis in Third Watch, Jesse Porter in Burn Notice, Patrick Owen in L.A. Doctors, and the voice of Conway Stern in Archer, and Trooper Sergeant 2 in Halo Reach. How are you today, sir? <laughs> Well, I'm good, man. Wow, you got the whole you got the whole career in in in, in the intro. <laughs> I, you me, Pat, uh, the, Pat, I mean, Pat, I, I forgot the name of my character on Ellie Doctors. That was good, man. <laughs> I tried my best. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it, it's a pleasure to have you on the show today. No, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here, man. Thank you so much for having me. You're very welcome. So getting right into my questions for you, Kobe, for some of our listeners that may not be familiar with your background, can you tell us how you got into acting? I think, yeah, well, um, it was always something, you know, when I was a kid and, you know, we did this, like a school play or something like that. It was always something that I sort of took to and, um, and enjoyed. And, you know, it came kind of easily to me um, when I when I was when I was a kid, um, and then you know my father is a singer, so you know having a career in entertainment always seemed like something that was doable to me, you know, because I, I I saw I saw my dad making a living doing it, so it never seemed like a pipe dream or something that wasn't achievable. Um, so then in high school I kind of thought, you know I did I did theater and stuff as a kid and then. In high school, I kind of thought I was too cool for it. Started playing basketball and stuff, and then I got back into it in college, and so sort of rolled from there. And then one of the one of the plays that I did in college, um, my manager saw me in the play, and then so when I graduated, we hooked up, and then she, and then we got to work, and I kind of started rolling from there. I um, like a month a month out of college, I booked my first job, which was ER. And then I've just been going ever since. Definitely. Now, in terms of The Gifted, what was it that interested you in the character of Jace Turner originally? Um, all the money that they're going to pay me to play him. <laughs> that, that was the money. <laughs> no, I mean, this, this, I mean, this is the kind of job, this is the kind of gig that I've been wanting to do for a long time. And uh, and it just so happened that Matt Nix, who was the showrunner and creator of Burn Notice, <clears throat> you know he's he's been given the honor of bringing this this gifted thing to life. So early on in the process, he called me and said, "Hey man, I got this thing cooking out. I want you to be a part of it somehow." And we both just kind of crossed our fingers, you know, hoping that it would work out. And then. About a year later, I, you know, I, I had to audition for Fox and I had to audition for Marvel, but it all worked out, and here I am talking to you. Definitely. Um, now we know that Turner is an agent for the Sentinel Services, but that he often questions his line of work. Uh, what can you tell us about Turner's view on the mutants in particular? 
Yeah, well, there's definitely a lot of gray area with um, where his character is coming from. You know, he's not just this, uh, he didn't just hate mutants and he wants to take them all down um, at all costs. He he sort of is conflicted about what he has to do. Um, he had a tragedy in his life that caused him to become a member of the Sentinel Services. So he's coming, that, that, that's what, you know, sort of, that's the spark that got him going in that direction. But, yeah, he definitely, he's conflicted about what he has to do, but he feels like he, he's, he's doing what's right. So as far as he's concerned, he's kind of the hero <laughs> of, the, of the story, which is, you know, which is, as we all know, is not the case. But as far as he's concerned, he is. And how do you approach a character like that that's really interesting? Because, as you said, he is conflicted. Like, he doesn't just hate the mutants. So how do you approach a character like that? You know, it's been fun, man. It's been it's been a lot more challenging than I thought it would be. Um, because they're presenting him, you know, the way the writers are setting him up. Like I said, it's not like the audience isn't set up to just hate him. You know, they could they, they kind of get to see where he's coming from pretty early on in, in the season. Like, I, I didn't think we were going to get into his backstory as early as we did. And, you know, we're only on episode seven now. And we've already had an entire episode that was sort of dedicated to Jace's origin story. Um, so, yeah, it's been a challenge, and it's been, but it's been fun. And I think it's interesting to have the guy who's on the show, he's the bad guy, but he's not necessarily a bad guy. Yeah, definitely. And for me, what's really exciting about your character is that, you know, with most of the other characters, like most of your starring characters, like they're characters from the X-Men comics, but your character is an original character, so we don't really know where his story can go, if that makes sense. Um, so that's why I'm really interested in. Um, do you find, because he's not from the comics, that this gave you more freedom to express yourself in the role than if he was from the comics? I think so, yeah, yeah, because we're creating it as we go, and so we don't have uh, anybody sort of fact-checking. I mean, not that, not that the comics are facts, because it's all... It's all it's all mythology, but um, yeah, yeah. There's, there's no, there's no point of reference from where this guy's coming from, so we can kind of make him come from wherever we we want to. Definitely. What do you think fans should look forward to the most in the gifted? I, I don't know. It all kind of depends on what you're into. I mean, the cool thing about this show is is that there's kind of something. For everyone, and I know that sounds like I'm just trying to, like I'm a used car salesman, you know, or something. But it's 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 kind of the truth. The way Matt Nick set it up, and um, Lauren Shu and Donna when they were developing it, they wanted it to appeal to a you know to a broad audience. So there's going to be you know all the special effects, all the action, um, all that superhero stuff that you know that the hardcore Marvel fans want to see but it's also you know it's a drama about a family that's on the run everything they have to deal with um so they, 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 they dive pretty deep into, into the personal stuff as well and it's not you know and it's not just superheroes wearing costumes trying to save the world this is like just sort of real people trying to survive even the mutants they're just trying to get by yeah, definitely. It's a very exciting prospect, of course. Um, now, obviously, there's a lot of comic book TV shows on today. Um, you know, there's so many to watch, so many options, which there weren't um, y years ago. So what would be the one thing, if you were to pinpoint one thing in particular, you believe is in The Gifted that other shows don't have that makes you think th the comic book fans should watch this show? I would say that it might be the gifted might be a little more relatable because the characters are presented as sort of everyday average people who just happen to have powers, you know, and they're they're, they're just trying to get by in this world that is that treats them horribly, you know, the the the, the climate 
you know, the social climate for mutants is, uh, you know, they're treated in, in, in a very hostile way. So I think, that, yeah, I think that's what people are going to be able to, to relate to. That's a really great answer. Thanks for that. Um, which has been the most challenging role in your career so far? Wow. That is a good question. Um, I don't know. They all have their challenges. They've all, I, I've been really lucky to be able to, I mean, not only get on shows that stay on for a long time, but also be on shows where I'm playing characters that I thoroughly enjoy playing the character, you know? Um, and I know that's just luck. I mean, that's just, that's, that's just pure luck. So as far as the most challenging, man, I don't know. I mean, I think everything has its challenges. Um, you know, like on, on the game, it was, uh, you know, you can, you can be doing the best acting that you can possibly do, but if it's not funny, then, then it's not working. You know what I mean? So it's trying to always find the funny, always find, you know, where the laugh is. Um, and I was lucky enough, you know, to do that for a long time. That show ran for nine years. And then now I'm making the shift back to to this action drama stuff um, that has its challenges as well, especially with what they've been throwing at Jace. I, you know, like I said earlier, I didn't think we were going to get this that deep into his personal life. And it's been some challenging stuff. It's been some challenging stuff. I've really had to go there. And uh, I'm enjoying it. That's really great. Um, my final question for you, Kobe, aside from The Gifted, do you have any other upcoming acting roles or any other projects outside of acting that you would like to talk about? Um, no, as far as acting goes, The Gifted is, is you know, I've, I've been uh, on that, working on that 24-7 since, you know, since we started. Um, as far as other projects, um, this morning I was trying to teach my great Dane how to go through the new giant doggy door that we had installed on our screen. So um, that's, that's what I've been working on today. And I think I might do some laundry later. Yeah, if you want us to do their laundry, I mean, it might surprise some of our listeners, <laughs> but even actors have to do it too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. You know, you open up, you open up the underwear drawer, and you're like, "Oh man, I gotta wear my, I gotta wear my D listers today. I gotta do some wash." <laughs> yeah, you you really did hear that, listeners. <laughs> um, that's all of my questions for you today, Kobe. It's been a pleasure talking to you on the podcast. Yeah, Roy. Thanks for having me, man. You're very welcome, and all hope. Right. Hopefully we can do it again sometime. Yeah, yeah, just let me know, bro, anytime, anytime. Yeah, thanks again for taking the time to talk to us, and take care, bye. Absolutely, take care, thanks. The Gifted will premiere on Fox on Monday, October 2nd at 9, 8 central. Time to wrap up today's show. Make sure to check out our podcast links, Check out our website, website.effythinkgeekpodcast.com slash EGP. Check out our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash effythinkgeekpodcast. Check out our YouTube channel, www.youtube.com slash user slash effythinkgeekcast. Check us out on Twitter, twitter.com slash effythinkgeekp. Check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash official podcast. Check out our Mixcloud profile, www.mixcloud.com slash podcast. Email us at the following email, effiefinggeekpodcast at gmail.com. Check out our companion podcast, Effiefinggeek Comic Cast, www.facebook.com slash effiefinggeekcomiccast. Make sure to check out the host's YouTube channels. Mine is www.youtube.com slash user slash destroyers. Check out Kobe Bell on Twitter, twitter.com slash I'm Kobe Bell. And check out channel 1138 where we broadcast live from www.channel1138.com. Geeks out, everyone. Oh, yeah.
No question. You're going to be working with a great filmmaker, and that's uh, primarily where we all succeed is what a, if you have a solid screenplay and you have a director. We re revisit the cranes, um, um, and I don't want to give too much away, actually, but it's that element. The first, it's the first story arc that is, I think, the first three or four episodes that you'll see. Um, we revisit.